this video deals with density and specific gravity. Density is defined to be the ratio of the mass of a substance to its volume. We represent density with the lowercase Greek letter rho or a lowercase d. Some typical units for density include kilograms per cubic meter, pounds per gallon, grams per milliliter, or grams per liter. Note that pounds per gallon uh, technically is a force per volume unit, not a mass per unit volume. An object will float in a fluid if the average density is less than the density of the fluid. An object will sink in a fluid if the average density is greater than the density of the fluid. And finally, an object will be neutrally buoyant in a fluid if its average density equals the density of the fluid. Specific gravity is defined to be as the ratio of the density of an object to the density of water. Note that specific gravity is represented by SG. If we have the same units for density in the numerator as in the denominator, the units will cancel out, resulting in no units for specific gravity. So then, what exactly is the difference between density and specific gravity? Let's take a closer look. Here we have some density data for various substances. We can see that gold is very dense, while ice is not dense at all. We see that ice will float in water because its density is less than that of water, while gold will sink in water since its density is greater than that of water. So now let's calculate the specific gravity of whole blood. We see that its density is 1.06 grams per cubic centimeter. So if we divide that by the density of water, 1.00 grams per cubic centimeter, we get a value of 1.06 for the specific gravity of whole blood. Now let's repeat the calculation using density data that is in pounds per cubic foot. Notice that these units are technically force per unit volume. However, when I use the density data in pounds per cubic foot for whole blood and water, I still get a value of 1.06. So note, no matter what units are used for the density, the specific gravity value will not change numerically speaking. However, the density numbers change whenever my units for the mass and volume change. Now let's put to use what we've just learned. Here we have Dr. Schubert with two burettes full of pop. One of them is regular Pepsi, that's the one closest to him, and the one closest to the camera is Diet Dr. Pepper. We will use these burettes to dispense a known volume of liquid. Dr. Schubert will tear the first beaker so that we do not include the mass of the beaker with the mass of the Diet Dr. Pepper in this case. He will now drain 50 milliliters of Diet Dr. Pepper into the beaker. Because we don't want to be around all day, we are going to speed this up to eight times the normal speed. Even at this fast speed, it takes a while to dispense 50 milliliters of Diet Dr. Pepper. Dr. Schubert stops the flow. He gets the last drop of Diet Dr. Pepper from the tip, and he determines the mass of the 50 milliliters of Diet Dr. Pepper. We see that the mass is 50.03 grams. He is now going to record that on the dry erase board for later use. He will now take the second beaker and tear it. Once that's accomplished, he puts it underneath the burette and will now drain 50 milliliters of Pepsi into the beaker. We'll speed this one up too. Once it gets close to the 50 milliliter mark, we'll slow it back down again. Dr. Schubert gets it right down to 50. He then will turn the stopcock, stopping the flow. He'll get the last drop off the tip and determine the mass of the regular Pepsi in the second beaker. 
he gets 52.07 grams. We will now calculate the density of the regular Pepsi and the Diet Dr. Pepper. To do this we will take 52.07 grams for the regular Pepsi and divide by the volume of 50 milliliters and we get a value for the density of 1.04 grams per milliliter. In other words, it's slightly more dense than ordinary water. For the Diet Dr. Pepper, we get a density rounded to three significant digits of 1.00 grams per milliliter. So we see that regular Pepsi is slightly more dense than Diet Dr. Pepper. Well, let's see what happens now if we take a a uh, new can of regular Pepsi, which will have the Pepsi, the can material itself, aluminum, and a little bit of air, and put it in a beaker of water. We see that its average density is greater than the density of water, and so it sinks. Looking at the can of Diet Dr. Pepper, with the Diet Dr. Pepper, a little bit of air, and the aluminum in the can, we see that its average density is slightly less than the density of water and therefore it floats.